All right. Hey, boys and girls, hope you've had a good day today. We're going to spend a few minutes now in the pew packers. We're going to start out and say the books of the Bible. Then we're going to sing Climb Sunshine Mountain. I'm going to read you a story. We'll have another song or two and um, then the five finger prayer. You ready? Let's say the books of the Bible. I hope you're all getting them down and learning them. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st, 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Jude, Revelation. Good. Let's sing the song, Climb Sunshine Mountain. This is a great song to sing early in the morning, remember. Climb, climb up sunshine mountain, heavenly breezes blow. Climb, climb up sunshine mountain, faces all aglow. Turn, turn from sin and doubting, look to God on high. Climb, climb up sunshine mountain, you and I. Now, I want to tell you a story and read to you from God's Word. I'm going to, not a story, I'm just going to say something to you about animals. Do you like animals? I've liked animals all my life. When I was a little fellow, I always wanted to see the animals. Love to go to the zoo. You've been to the zoo? How many of you have been to the zoo? Do you enjoy going to the zoo? All kinds of animals in the zoo. Which one's your favorite one? Some of you like the monkey. Some of you like the giraffe, the old oh, elephant, the lion. Hmm, how about the hippopotamus? Well, every spring it's a nice thing to get to go to the zoo if you get a chance. They got a lot of new baby animals. Before it gets very hot, the animals will move around and you can enjoy looking at them and seeing them. Do you suppose that Noah liked animals? I really wonder. I hope he did. Because boy, he lived with a lot of animals for a good while. In Genesis chapter 7, we read about Noah getting on the ark with his wife, with his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives, and a lot of animals. And here's what the Bible says. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in thy generation. God says, I'm going to save you, Noah, because you've been a good man. And he says, now I want you to bring of every beast that's clean, thou shalt take to thee by sevens, you bring seven of the clean beasts in, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and the female. Of the fowls, that's the birds, he says, of fowls also of the air, by sevens, bring seven of them in, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. 
Because, he said, in seven days I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I destroy from the face of the earth. Verse 5 says, Noah did what God said for him to do. And he went in with his sons and his wife. And they took within them, with them all these animals of the clean beast and of the beasts that are not clean, of the fowls, and everything that creepeth upon the earth. They went into the ark two and two. And it came to pass after seven days that it started raining. You know, if, uh, if Noah had not been a good man, a righteous man that pleased God, I guess we wouldn't have any animals. Wouldn't that be a sad thing? But because he was, God used Noah to save all these wonderful animals that we see. Which one's your favorite? I like them all. But aren't you glad we get to see the animals? You can look at them in pictures, in books. You can look at them on TV. You can see them in different places, all kinds of animals. And isn't it great that Noah was such a good man that he was able to save the animals and to save the human race? I hope you be good boys and girls. We never know what God's going to call upon us to do. Oh, we're not going to have a flood again. You remember why God put the rainbow in the sky, and you look for the rainbow after it rains, and the sun comes back out, and that's God's promise. I'm not going to destroy the earth again with a flood of water. But God may not ask us to build an ark, but he wants us to be good people in our lives and do good things. And you boys and girls need to think about being good boys and girls and doing what God's great will is. Now then, Let's sing another song or two, and then we're going to talk about the uh, books for just a few minutes. We'll play that little game. I hope you're learning that, and then we'll do the five-finger prayer. Let's sing about the um, little green frog, right? I'm a little green frog, and God loves me. I'm a little green frog, and God loves me. I'm a little green frog, and God loves me. Croak, croak croak. I'm a medium-sized frog, and God loves me. I'm a medium-sized frog, and God loves me. I'm a medium-sized frog, and God loves me. Croak, croak, croak. I'm a big bullfrog, and God loves me. I'm a big bullfrog, and God loves me. I'm a big bullfrog, and God loves me. Croak, croak, croak. What about it, Abel? What's your favorite animal? I'm a, what would you say, Abel? Mongoose. Well, Abel likes a mongoose. What about it, Enoch? What's your favorite animal? A giraffe. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Enoch likes that giraffe with a long neck. What about it, Aaron? What's your favorite animal? Turtle. Oh, boy. Aaron likes a turtle. I like them all. Well, you have to tell us later what your favorite animal is. All right. Let, let's talk about these books of the Bible right quick. Now, I hope you're learning all of them. The first book of the Bible is Genesis. That's the one that talks about all these animals that God made. And Aaron, not Aaron, but Abel, named all of them. And then Noah saved them on the ark. What did I say? Boy, Abel, I'm giving him way too much credit. <laughs> Children, disregard that previous statement. If you don't understand it, ask your mother and daddy. Adam named all the animals. I'm standing here looking at Abel fixing this thing up for the sermon tonight. Adam named them. And that's why we know what a giraffe is. That's why we know what a donkey is, a turtle. Now then, Noah was able to save them on the ark. But that's all in Genesis. Now let's talk about which book follows which book. What comes after Ex Exodus? Leviticus. Let's get five out of the Old Testament. That's one. What comes after Ruth? What is it? First Samuel. All right, that's two. What comes after Job? Psalms, that's three. What comes after Jonah? Micah. Micah, that's four. And what comes after Zechariah? We can't miss that one. Malachi. Malachi. Good. Now let's get five out of the New Testament. 
All right, what comes after Luke? John. John took care of Jesus' mother when Jesus was crucified. He took care of her for the rest of her life. What comes after Acts? Romans, that's number two now. Let's get another one. What comes after 2 Corinthians? Galatians. Two more. What comes after 1 Timothy? 2 Timothy. And what comes after 2 Peter? 1 John. Good. Now keep studying them and keep learning them. Let's talk for just a moment about the, um, well, before we do the five-finger prayer, let's, uh, let's sing a couple more songs. Watch the bulletin this week. There's something in there about the little Christian light. Let's sing the little Christian light, and then we'll sing Jesus Loves Me. This little Christian light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little Christian light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little Christian light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine all around the neighborhood. I'm going to let it shine all around the neighborhood. I'm going to let it shine all around the neighborhood. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Well, let's sing that song about the old devil being a fox. Now, we shouldn't be disliking foxes because the devil's called an old fox. That just means he acts real crafty. There's nothing wrong with a fox. Don't forget that now. The devil is a sly old fox. If I could catch him, I'd lock him in a box, lock him in a box and throw away the key for all the mean things he's done to me. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus more and more each day. Now, let's sing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Now, let's talk about the five-finger prayer. Is this helping you remember to say the right things in your prayers every night and then again in the daytime? The first thing on the thumb that we talk about that we, who, who we should pray for are those people who are the closest to us. Who's the closest to you? Well, your daddy, your mother? You got a brother, a sister? You got a grandfather, a grandmother? Those people, your family. Remember, little folks, pray for your family every day and ask God to bless them, to protect them and help them. You love your family, and you want everything to happen good for them. All right, who should we pray for next? We got on this next one over here. Those that are in authority, we'd say every time, who are the folks that are in authority in this country? It's the President of the United States. He's got a very serious and a big, big job, and it affects all of our lives. We need to pray for him, ask God to give him wisdom, guide him, and direct him. We need to pray for the governor. He needs wisdom from God and guidance and direction. We need to pray for the mayor. We need to pray for the police chief and the fire chief. We need to pray for these people that are in authority. They're trying to protect and help us. Then the next one on here is the leaders. Remember who the leaders are? The elders in the church. Who are our elders? Well, Phil Sullivan's an elder. Jerry Cooper is an elder. And also, Tim Dickerson is an elder. We need to pray for them and ask that God would bless them with the good use of their minds and bodies, that he would give them wisdom, guide and direct them as they try to shepherd the flock, help take care of the church here at Amory. And we really need to be praying for them a whole lot right now because it's kind of hard right now to kind of shepherd the flock. We're not all getting to come to church like we ordinarily do because of this old virus. So pray for the leaders.
pray for the deacons. You need to pray for Abel and Enoch and myself trying to preach and teach God's Word. Pray for us. And then we've got on here, pray for the weak. Remember who the weak are? They're people that are sick. People are going to have to have surgeries. People are trying to recover from surgeries. Broken bones. People that are having treatments. Your mother and father, your folks can help you know who to pray for about that. And you can call them by name. And pray always for yourself. That's the last one on here for me. Ask God to bless you. Ask God to help you grow up to be a really fine young boy or girl. And always to do His good will. And while you're praying for yourself, don't forget to pray and thank God for your food. You got good food to eat, everybody doesn't have good food to eat. You get to live in a good house, everybody doesn't get to live in a good house. A lot of people in the world don't have enough to eat, children. A lot of little children don't have enough to eat. Don't forget to thank God for your food and all the blessings of life when you're praying for yourself. Now, I hope you have a good night and a good week, and we hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid out somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from
course, we're having the services by way of streaming. Hope you've had a nice day, and as always, we continue to ask that you pray that we have a solution to this virus very soon, a vaccine, so that we can all be back together. Let's remember those that are listed in the bulletin, and uh, especially Brother Fred Webb, to recover from the broken hip. Martha Williams at home recovering from an illness. Don't forget Ann Gray uh, with her treatments. And we appreciate you remember Cindy Hathcock in an upcoming surgery soon. Let's continue to pray for each other every day and ask the Lord to continue to watch over us at this time. If you need anything, any, any kind of help that we can assist you with in the church, you please feel free to call myself or one of the elders. You can call Abel, and we'll see what we can do. We want to begin now with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we humbly bow and reverence thy holy name and give thee thanks for this beautiful Lord's Day. We're so very thankful that we were able to come earlier today and to worship thee. We pray that our worship of thee was pleasing to thee. That thou will bless us because of it and help us to be stronger today, the rest of this day, and tomorrow. We thank thee always for all that's been done for us in life physically, for all the physical blessings, the food, clothing, and shelter, for the use of our minds and bodies, for all the ways that thou hast been so very good to us. And we thank thee again and again for the great blessing of Jesus Christ, who's made possible for us forgiveness of sins and a home in heaven with thee. Help us to be very careful how we live our lives, that we will have that home in heaven with thee. We pray that thou would give us wisdom and guide and direct us throughout our lives. We ask thy blessings upon the sermon this night. We pray that it's pleasing in thy sight, and it will truly be great help and benefit to each one of us. We ask in Christ's name, and amen. This evening, I'd like for us to consider the question, how is your spiritual appetite? And how is my spiritual appetite? Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 we read, where Jesus says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I hope that we are hungering and thirsting after righteousness, simply because that would be very pleasing to Jesus. You know... Aaron, Aaron, I'd like to start over, please, sir. <laughs> the lesson this evening is 
How is your spiritual appetite? All right, let's stop. Can you back it up one for me? I don't know how to back it up. I'm sorry, I just got off on one thing. I think I can make it now. Uh oh. This, this, they're, they're more than used to technical difficulties. If you, if you move it back for me just one, I'm ready to go this time now. And check the time. I'm sorry about yeah, that. No, you're good. You're how, good. How, how you do that? I, I suppose there's some way to back it up in there. Uh, yeah. All right, right there. We're we'll just at the very first it. one. Oh, Man. you got it all the way through it? Yeah, it's, it's going back on this one's a little bit tougher. I'm sorry. No, that's trouble. all right. That's all right. You got to double click on it, didn't you? No, I, I just got confused here. I, look, oh, okay. I looked at something and I thought, well, boy, I missed that, but no, I didn't. I just, right. I just hadn't got to it yet. All right, ready? All right, we're having technical difficulties, and that's okay. All right, so. <laughs> okay, ready to go. Just give it one. One. There all right. Go. Now, you it, want it right here? That's fine. That good? Okay. No, it wasn't that. It was my paper. Okay, all right. <laughs> good all right, Aaron, I'm ready. <laughs> all right, good deal. All right, brethren, tonight our lesson is how is your spiritual appetite? And how is my spiritual appetite? Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6, notice what Jesus says. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know, when Jesus said this, there he was talking to a multitude of people. And we read in chapter 5 and verse 1, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples said unto him. Well, after Jesus spoke to them for a while, you know, we find out that uh, not all of these people were there for the right reason. Not all the folks that were there were there for spiritual reasons. Some of them were just there because they wanted to see Jesus perform miracles. They wanted to be fed by Jesus. And after he said this, a lot of his disciples did not follow him anymore. John chapter 6 verse 66, notice. From that time, after this, many of his disciples... Believers went back and walked no more with him. It's very sad, isn't it? We should hunger for a closeness to God. Now, we have all kind of appetites today. Most of us enjoy from time to time getting to eat in different types of restaurants. We like different types of food. <laughs> hey, a lot of people have a great appetite for shopping. And there are a lot of people who have a great appetite for all types of sports. In fact, they have a voracious appetite for all type of sports. But we need to ask ourselves, uh, how is our appetite for spiritual things? Well, we should hunger for a closeness to God. Psalm 42, verses 1 and 2, the psalmist says, As the heart, you understand that the heart here, H-A-R-T, is a deer, panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God, David says. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? That's an interesting statement, that last statement there, isn't it? When will we come and appear before God? What if we know when that day was? What difference would that make in our life right now? Would it make a big difference? We need to think about when we shall appear before God. This is a person who has an appetite that is very spiritual. You know, assembling with the saints, coming together in the congregation when we all can, not like it is just right now, is vitally important to our spiritual life. Psalm 42 and verse 4, David says, when I remember these things, talking about different things that's happened in his life, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. I hope that we want to go with the congregation when we can and assemble. I hope it's something very special to us to pour out a voice of joy and praise to our almighty God, our creator. And I hope that we will keep the holy day Sunday faithfully 
as we assemble with the saints when we can. Psalm 122, David says this, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That's a wonderful, beautiful attitude. I hope that's our attitude. That when we can, we are glad, we are happy that we can come into the congregation to be with God, to worship Him. I hope we're truly thankful for that opportunity. And I hope we pray about that opportunity. Brethren, we should have a craving for the Bible. But do we? Do we really have a craving for the Bible? There's an old story that's been told for many, many years, a lot more years than I'm old, and a lot of you, about a preacher who went to the home of this family, and he was talking to them, and all of a sudden the father said, well, hey, wait just a minute, preacher. He said to his son, the little boy, he said, son, go get that book that we all love so much in this home and like to read. And a few minutes later, the little boy came back with, at that time, the Sears and Roebuck catalog. You know, that was quite embarrassing. What would the child bring back today? Maybe it'd be a cell phone. Who knows what it would be? But what do we love and what do we crave? Hopefully it is God's Word. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2-3, through 3, a verse we're very familiar with, we know about newborn babies. He says here, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that they may grow thereby. If so be you have tasted the Lord, that the Lord is gracious. Well, if the baby doesn't desire the milk, if the baby doesn't want to nurse, to eat, the baby is not going to grow. The baby would, we know, die. He says here, if so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. I hope we have tasted many times in our life that God is gracious to us. As we've said before in the last few weeks, how much God has blessed us, it's hard for us to know. How many things that would not be good has God saved us from and our family from? There's no way for us to know. But we need to trust and believe that God is gracious and we have been recipients of that graciousness from Almighty God. You know, one can truly see the intensity of the appetite for the word in this verse. Understanding how a newborn babe desires the milk. And listen, there are no words that can satisf satisfy a person like the words of God from the Bible. Well, in Psalm 119, verse 131, David said this, I opened my mouth and panted for, I longed for thy commandments. This is the Old Testament version of 1 Peter 2, 2 and 3. What does it mean when he says, I opened my mouth? He opened his mouth to receive it just like the baby desires the sincere milk of the word. It is truly, as Jesus says in Matthew 4 and verse 4, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. I hope we're listening to Jesus. I hope that's the true way it is with us, that we are receiving the Word of God, that we can grow, that we can be pleasing to God. We notice then that we should thirst for a continual prayer life. We've been trying very hard for a good while to encourage our little children and pew packers to pray. And we hope that you parents are helping them to be able to pray and to learn how to pray. To give thanks for their food. To pray when they get up and pray when they go to bed. We talk about the five finger prayer. About praying for those that are the closest to us, our families. About praying for those in authority, the president. About praying for our leaders, the elders in the church. About praying for the weak, those that are sick and by praying for themselves. Now, it may very well be that some of you that are older did not have the opportunity to be encouraged and blessed in this way to learn to pray. But if not, you need to be learning now. You need to be praying morning, noon, and night, as a little song says, and staying in contact with the Heavenly Father, your Creator. 
It's going to make all the difference in our life. David penned this verse, Psalm 143, verses 5 and 7. He says, I remember the days of old. What does he mean about the days of old? Well, if you look back up in verses 3 and 4, you would read this. For the enemy hath, he says, persecuted my soul. He hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness as those who have long been dead. What's he talking about? Saul. Saul's soldiers have persecuted me. They have pursued me and pursued me. I've had to run and hide. I've hidden in caves. I've had to hide in dark places. Then he says, Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed, verse 4, within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember those days, David said, and I meditate on all thy works, God. I muse on the works of thy hands. I think about what you've done for me, he's saying to God. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like them who go down into the pit. Why is David speaking like this? Because he knows no one can help him in this situation but God. I hope we understand before we find ourselves in a very difficult situation that we need to be speaking to God all the time because there are many times we'll get in places where there's no one, there's nothing that can help us, only our Creator, only God our Father. And isn't it great that we can be in the right kind of relationship and speaking to Him in prayer on a continual basis, that when that time comes, it's just like ordinary. We've already been talking to Him all along, and so now we're going to talk to Him about this. I need help with this. And I know that Thou canst help me. 1 Samuel 13, verse 14 Samuel comes to King Saul and he lets Saul know that God is going to appoint another king. He's going to appoint a king, Samuel says to Saul, one who's after his, that is God's own heart. And that was going to be David. And Samuel says to Saul, But now thy kingdom shall not continue. You're going to be through Saul. And none of your sons are going to be king. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people. Because thou, Saul, hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. You know, David would well understand Romans chapter 12 and verse 12. Notice, rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. As we talked a moment ago about what David had had to endure as Saul was trying his best to kill him and have him killed. Every time that God's blessing was there, that hope was such a great thing to David. He rejoiced in it. He rejoiced to know that there was always hope for him because of God. Therefore, he was patient in his tribulations. He was patient in all this hiding and running from Saul and his enemies. And because of that, he continued instant in prayer, beseeching and asking God for his great help. Now, brethren, I hope we have great hope from God in our belief in him that he will bless and help us. I hope we'll be patient in our tribulations, our problems, our stresses, and I certainly hope that we continue instant in prayer, as we said just a while ago, before some hard circumstances comes upon us. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, we see that prayer is that avenue of communication to God that gives strength to our heart and mind. And we all need to have our heart and mind strengthened on a daily basis regular basis. Prayer is one of the greatest ways 
to do that. Paul said in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, Be careful for nothing. Don't do anything without first talking to God and asking God's blessings and God's guidance. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then he says, because of this, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Brethren, Jesus valued prayer. All the apostles sought God and God's guidance through prayer. Many, many Christians have received great strength in all kinds of circumstances and situations through their speaking in their prayers to Almighty God and receiving His blessings. Today, our world is filled with the communication of tools of electronics, electronic technology. It's great in many ways. It's wonderful. We're thankful for it. But I hope we will remember that none can satisfy our needs, the needs of men and women, boys and girls, like God and God's Word. Let's be sure that we have an appetite for God's Word and we speak to Him on the regular basis to praise Him and to thank Him and to ask for His help in our lives. If you've never obeyed the gospel of Christ, you need to so you can speak to God in a proper way, in a right way, in a way that he'll listen and answer. Oh yes, God hears everything. But he tells us he answers the prayers of his children. If you've never obeyed the gospel of Christ through repentance of your sins, through confessing him as God's son so he'll confess you as one of God's children, and then to be baptized, to be washed in the blood of Christ, you need to do that. And be ready because you do not know, I do not know when we shall appear before the Lord. We'd be happy to assist you in this way. It only takes a matter of minutes to do this. For those of us who've already obeyed the gospel of Christ, if there's any need that we have of a public nature to ask God for forgiveness or help, we need to be sure we avail ourselves of that as soon as possible. Because again, we know not when we shall appear before the Lord. I hope this lesson this evening has been helpful to us all and will cause us to have a greater appetite for the Word of God, to know what His will is, and to be ready to meet Him and to receive a home in heaven. Thank you. He's coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will
Oh, oh.